Welcome back to the Art of Boat Building. In this episode, Bob gives the seat posts a serious upgrade. If you're enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe. It really helps promote the channel. We invite you to lend your financial support by joining the Art of Boat Building's Patreons. Thank you and enjoy. Some of you may remember back in episode 48 when I constructed and installed the seats in my boat that I followed the plans pretty much exactly. Even the seat post, which I was a steam bent piece of wood and attached to the side of the frame. So a while back I was inside of the boat and I sat here on the port side seat and the seat broke and it was mainly the seat bracket that failed. Well, I made two mistakes with this bracket. So you can see this is where the bracket failed right in the center here and also up here where it attached to the uh, to the seat cleat. Now the two things that happened was first of all instead of using oak I used Douglas fir and secondly the Douglas fir that I laminated the sections up with was kiln dried. Now once wood is kiln dried it doesn't want to steam very well. A lot of people think you can take kiln dried wood and soak it in water and it'll loosen up again and that is not the case because really what happens is there's lignum in the wood and once it is heated that lignum turns hard. So that's why in green wood where it has not been heated you can bend it and then once it's in that position and the heat from the steam sets that lignum. So because this failed, I decided I would come up with a new plan on how I was going to attach the seats to the boat. So I decided what I would do is I would make the seat post out of a solid piece of material. Now I could do that with perhaps a piece of marine plywood, but I thought that's just really not going to look that great. So fortunately, a month or so ago, I was visiting a sculptor friend of mine and he had finished a project that was made out of quarter inch silicon bronze sheet. So I said to him, hey, would you be willing to let a little bit go? And he did, so he sold me a scrap of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fabricate a seat post out of some silicon bronze. Now this off cut of bronze is about 35 pounds worth. So the first thing I need to do is to make some templates of the seat posts that I can lay out on the bronze. So I'm gonna use the starboard side here as a pattern so that I know that I have the right angle and distance that that bracket will need. So now I've got the template made, I need to figure out a pleasing shape in here for that bracket. Thank you. 
Don't be alarmed. The blade I have in this saw is designed for non-ferrous metal. The saw should be set as deep as possible to have a small cutting surface, the opposite of when you're cutting wood. I found that a sharpie marker gave me a little cleaner line to saw up to. When sawing, I cut to the inside of the blue line, giving me an accurate cut. It fits pretty good. <clears throat> so um, what I'm going to do next is I'm, I'll drill several holes in here to attach it there. And down here I'm going to silver solder a couple of little tabs on there so that I can fasten that down into the frame. So that'll be the next step to get some holes drilled in there and to get those tabs on there. Well, I've got my bracket all made now, and you can see I put a piece of mason string here across to the um, fore and aft seat posts, or seat cleats, I should say, um, so that I could get this located properly, and I put a little um, stick in here to hold it uh, solid. Now, I had to do a little fine tune tuning, but it was mostly here to fit the curvature of the frame here. So this piece will sit right in here, like this. And of course, it'll get screwed into this uh, cleat here. So the next thing was to make a couple of little tabs here. And I did that with the sheet being large enough so that I could do it properly without having to have tiny little pieces to try to drill into. But I've got them all cut out now, and they will go on here one will go here, and one will go up here, like that. So the next step is to silver solder these together. Before I do that, I'm going to fit the starboard side. 
so that I can silver solder these tabs on both of them at the same time. So the next thing I need to do is to silver solder these little tabs onto my bracket. But before I do that, I want to clean all of this oxide or this patina off of this piece of bronze. So I'm going to set my little tabs to the side. Now the one of the reasons I want this to be clean is that the metal needs to be very clean so that the silver solder will attach these little tabs to there. So you can see on this I've already actually cleaned up these little tabs pretty well so that it'll silver solder on there really well. So to do that, I'm going to start by sanding it with a 220 grit uh, oscillating sander. Now one of the things about sanding with the 220 to get started that I actually switched the paper for the back side here. Uh, as I'm using it, it smooths out quite a bit. So I can see from the beginning to when the pad's getting more worn that it's getting more of a polish on there. So once I'm done with that, I then am going to switch to my palm sander here and I've got 400 grit um, wet dry sandpaper on there. So I'm going to use 400 and then I'm going to slowly gradate up to 1000. So it'll be 400, 600, 800, and 1000. Well, you can see 1000 grit gets pretty close to actually a pretty high polish. You can actually see the reflection of my hand in there. Uh, so this is plenty good for what we're going to do next. It's going to get quite dirty when we actually silver solder on there. But by having it cleaned up to this degree that the flux and any cleanup will happen much easier. So I'm all set up here with my bracket and my little tabs and get ready to silver solder. Now I should mention that using the term silver solder is probably a little misleading to a lot of viewers. This is not soldering in the sense of like how a plumber would sweat copper pipes together with a really soft lead based solder. Silver solder is actually very strong. And in fact, what we're really doing here is silver solder brazing. And brazing, as I had mentioned in earlier videos, is the, a capillary action of that the material gets drawn in between the two base metal joints that you're trying to make. So to get started, we have uh, two things that we need to have here. The first is some flux. So the flux is used in order to clean the metal as it's getting heated. So as you're heating it, you will get an oxidation in the base metal and the flux protects that from happening. 
Now, so the flux will need to be a will need to be put in between the two surfaces that we want to join together. So the other thing we need is some silver solder. Now, this solder here is 45, which means it's 45 percent silver. Now, as I had mentioned earlier, that silver solder is much stronger than what we think of as regular solder. So silver solder can be as strong as nearly 70,000 PSI. This one is in the range of 40 to 50,000 PSI. It's not inexpensive because of all the silver in it, but I've had this piece here for a number of years. And I believe like new, this is probably in the 50 to 70 dollar range, depending on where you're at. Uh, but if I'm doing this properly, I should only use about a quarter of an inch or so of this uh, silver solder here. So it lasts a long time. So to get started, we'll put some flux on the parts. And I'll put it in between here. Now I've seen people silver solder and they really pile a lot of flux on there. The problem with doing that is that the flux, once it's heated, it actually turns to like a glass and it's extremely hard to get off the finished piece. So though I'm being, I think, fairly liberal, there are people that have gobbed way too much on there. So um, I want to get this lined up right where I want it. Now in order to hold it there, I'm going to do a couple of things. One, I'm going to put a weight here on the workpiece. And the second thing I'm going to do is I have this metal tip that I'm going to set right on there and put a weight on it as well. And what that does is it really holds that piece right where I want it to be. And I'm going to get the other one buttered up also so that when I'm ready to move it, I've got it already ready to go. Now the heat source that I'm going to use is I'm going to use oxyacetylene. Now one of the things that does need to happen with the silver solder is it needs a pretty high heat in order to become fluid and so that capillary action can happen. It can be done with map gas. Uh, you will not find success with straight propane. Now the problem with map gas is that it is not as hot as oxyacetylene. And you can get that job done with map gas, but what happens is that you really end up heating a lot more of the piece. In this case, with the oxycetylene, it's going to heat a smaller area quicker so that we can silver solder that in there. So now before I get started, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to put the silver solder here on the bottom side of it, and then the heat should draw the silver all the way through, and hopefully that'll be obvious in the video. So I've got it all set up, so the next thing is to get my torch and put some heat on it. Now when I heat this, I'm going to heat more on the bracket itself than on this little piece because it's going to heat up quite quickly. What you really are after here is for the base metal to melt the solder as opposed to the other way around. So we're going to make sure we get it good and hot. So 
So you can see I'm adding the solder to the back side of it here, and I'm not melting the solder with the torch. I'm letting the workpiece itself melt it. Now I have a little bit of a deposit of it on the back side here, and if we watch closely, you'll see the silver doing that capillary action through the front. You can see that little silver line showing up between the two pieces. You can just see the silver coming through there, so I know we've got that done. So here I am working on the second bracket, and I moved the camera around so you could see it from the other angle. So once again, I'm getting the piece nice and hot, and you can see where the flux has cleaned off that oxide, and it's actually shiny. So I apply the silver solder, just a very little bit, you can see there. And as you can see from the front, one, the first one, it, that solder, uh, the silver solder gets sucked right into that joint. Once I've finished soldering, I like to take the piece and quench it in cool water. Now what that does, that thermal shock helps any of that flux that is still on there literally just break right off of it. You can see how clean the joint looks with all of that flux has popped right off of it. The next step is to get the bracket all cleaned up. You can see where it oxidized on here, essentially a tarnish. Uh, it also could be considered a patina, would be a tarnish, like when a penny turns brown. Uh, you can see here where the flux was on there, how it's prohibited that oxidation to happen so that we got a good bond between our cab and our bracket. So the best way to get cleaning this up is I'm just going to use some sandpaper and work my way up. I'm going to start with uh, 320 and then I will slowly work it up till a thousand grit like I have up here. And it comes off pretty easily. It's just a matter of taking your time and working on it. For the final sanding, I went up to a 2000 grit sandpaper, which practically polishes the bronze. I then finished the pieces off with some Mother's Mag Polish, which was a nice to put a nice final polish on the piece. And after a little light buffing, the piece is all finished and ready for installation. Well, the plans show the seat being five inches inward from the inside of this rib. And one of the things I don't like is you can see the top of this bronze bracket. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it here and then I'm going to change this angle a little bit and um, recut it.
All of the scrap gets melted down for future projects. I've got the port side bracket all cut down as well. Let's <coughs> just give it a little polish here, get some of the fingerprints off and some of that area where I worked on it. Um, I had actually thought about cutting um, up into here to relieve that a little bit. Uh, and I actually made a template here, but I just didn't, I don't think it was needed. I kind of like the simple shape of it now. Um, I think it's much better than the first part. Just a little bit more delicate, maybe, if it's the right word. I don't know. Um, so we'll give this a quick polish here, and then we'll see how they look in the boat. Before I install them, I wanted to take some fairing compound and fill the unnecessary holes. After I get them sanded down, I put a couple of coats of paint on the cleat. You can see I'm using dolphinite as the bedding compound. Now the other thing is you can see that I'm using this wax ring, so I always get my screws coated with some beeswax. A couple of things happen. One, it goes into the wood easier, and also it that wax helps protect that hole for any kind of moisture that could be in there. Now many times I get asked about, sometimes I use a bedding compound and sometimes I don't. My general guideline is if the fitting is in a place where it has, could have some prolonged wetness, like where this bracket is going, or perhaps a fitting that would be on a deck, then I think the bedding compound is important. Now, on a vertical surface, like this upper part of the bracket, where there really is hardly any potential for it getting very wet, then I don't use any bedding compound. Well, that looks much better where you can't see the top of that bracket. Well, I'm really happy with the way those turned out. Now, I'm going to allow the bronze to patina out to a nice, even brown, so I won't continue to polish them. So I think it's quite an upgrade. It's extremely strong. So if not a practical upgrade, it certainly is an artistic upgrade. So in the next episode, we'll be working on some of the other details in the cockpit here. So until then, thanks for watching The Art of Boat Building.